welcome to Viewpoint. I'm Vladimir Masalub, and right now I'm joined by the volunteer from the analytical website Inform Napalm and a demobilized soldier from the armed forces of Ukraine, Hanadi Kornyev. Hanadi, welcome to Viewpoint. Hello. Hanadi, first of all, let's talk about the volunteer initiative you're taking part at, the website fact checking and military intelligence and the reconnaissance website called Inform Napalm. Um, it was created um, in the wake of the first movement of the Russian troops in Crimea in early March of 2014. And by then, there were already a lot of new information resources, information sites, which were created during the, in the wake of Euromaidan revolution. So why there was a need for yet another resource? And what is the main mission of your website? Well, the main mission of Inform Napalm is to tell the truth about uh, conflict in Ukraine. And uh, why it's different from other websites? Uh, I guess because uh, originally uh, Napalm was created by people who were in uh, Crimea, who were um, around and in besieged uh, uh, Ukrainian uh, bases in Sebastopol and who were there. So who, who were not only uh, telling uh, some uh, analytical story, but who were telling the, their own story, uh, their own uh, uh, story of seeing Russian soldiers uh, at their uh, doors, at their homes. And Adi, you position yourself as open source intelligence, military intelligence, fact-checking website. And to do the military intelligence, once requires, or military analysis, once requires some sort of expertise. Who does that for your website? Uh, well, first of all, we, we don't call ourselves military intelligence website, we call ourselves uh, open source uh, intelligence. So that's kind of a little bit different. Yeah, but there are a, lot of, a, yeah. Lot of your, a lot of your articles, a lot of your analytical articles are about military movements right. and military intelligence. Well, we have a lot of um, people who served in the army, uh, even some people who are serving right now and doing this as a kind of moonlighting uh, volunteer service for, for Ukraine. Uh, and we have uh, some foreign experts who are helping us. Uh, primarily, uh, our first expert was Irakli Komahidze. He is Georgian. Uh, he was uh, taking part in uh, uh, Assetia conflict on the side of Georgia. And uh, he does a great job of, uh, of military analysis. Well, now talking about the, the team, can you tell us, without revealing too many secrets, mm -hmm. who are the core team and who are these people? Because I understand all of the volunteers, so they uh, donate their free time apart from their main course of work. So who are they? Who are these people? Uh, well, Roman Burko is the founder of uh, our community, and uh, he comes from uh, Crimea. Uh, and, uh, well, now he's evidently... Uh, in, in Ukraine, in, in the mainland. And uh, he is a journalist who done a lot of uh, research around uh, the uh, Black Sea fleet and so forth and so on. Uh, as I already mentioned, we have Irakli, uh, who is uh, our uh, major uh, analyst and who does a lot of great job. And uh, we have also a lot of people from all, all over uh, Ukraine and all over the world. We have uh, Victoria from Kramatorsk, we have Vitaly from actually from the occupied uh, Luhansk Oblast. Uh, we have a lot of other peoples. You know, I will not mention everybody because we have more than 100 right now. Of course, and I understand you have an extensive co a network of volunteers abroad because I noticed that your website has at least 24 different languages. Who are these people abroad who are helping you? Or who are these people who are translating the information into these most various languages? I know there is, there is Japanese, there is Chinese, uh, you name it. So, and how do you find these volunteers? Well, you see people... Uh, and, 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 and most important, are they volunteers or are you paying them? No, we're not paying anybody. Actually, we are paying for the hosting of the website uh, and it's quite expensive because of the uh, permanent attacks. Well, we can discuss it later. But uh, talking about translators, uh, there are a lot of Ukrainians living all over the world. And they have, of course, families. Sometimes, you know, it's uh, Ukrainian uh, uh, who came to China or to Japan, married there. And, uh, of course, uh, his uh, uh, wife or her husband supports uh, her cause, her, uh, the cause of Ukraine. And uh, uh, we... Frankly speaking, we have different uh, volume of translations on different language versions. So uh, German, 
English, uh, Swedish, uh, several other versions are really up to date and they have uh, most of the materials we, uh, we do. There are other, other versions which just do the major, so we don't ask, for example, our uh, Chinese uh, language fork to do, you know, daily translations. But if we do infographics like uh, Russian presence or like Syria or like any other uh, infographics, they do the translation because it's important we want people to know uh, this unique information. Can we talk a little bit the contents of um, the information which, which you're posting online and which you're sharing with, with the general audience? How do you select what to target, what kind of uh, story to uncover? Uh, it's a combination of some luck because uh, most of uh, the research we do, we do it uh, based on open source uh, materials like social networks, uh, um, Russian propaganda on TV uh, and other channels. So first of all, it's your researcher's luck. So you might find, uh, you know, there is a, a truck which was involved in MH17 uh, tragedy, and then you will uh, start to untangle the story and you figure out a lot of interesting details. Uh, and secondly, of course, we, uh, we try to cover issues which are uh, now discussed widely by the public and which are interesting. So, for example, starting from uh, September, we uh, launched extensive research into Russian presence in uh, Syria, which is now you know, discussed by everybody. Uh, before that, we were doing research on uh, the Russian presence in Ukraine because uh, well, there were a lot of Russian troops and Russia keeps denying it right now, uh, despite a lot of evidence. Uh, probably uh, in winter, we want to cover... Uh, so to say, a Russian influence network worldwide. But mm -hmm. that requires a lot of effort and a lot of, it's a stretch for all of us because, uh, as you said, we have day jobs, we have families, and so it's uh, not so easy uh, to do the job which actually, you know, some official uh, authorities should be doing. Yeah, as well. and Adi, given the um, sensitivity of the work which you're doing, you're working with uh, military data, you're working with military intelligence, and um, I assume, and, and, and some of your work um, has been uncovering the Russians' presence here in, in eastern Ukraine, which Russia is vehemently denying, has been vehemently denying all the time. Have there been any threats to your cause or to the people personally who are working on your cause? Yes, we receive threats, but we don't know who are these people. So, so somebody might write you on Facebook, you, I will kill you or you're a bastard, but you know. Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm or... talking about some credible threats. The people who are working for you, did they get into some trouble? Well, thanks God, <laughs> no. <laughs> so far, yeah, we, we receive permanent threats from some, you know, uh, people online, and you don't know is this a real course. person or who is this person is, but we never receive the threats like on the street. Okay, cyber attacks? Yeah, it's permanent. So uh, we have three types of attacks. We have uh, DDoS attacks, we have uh, password recovery attacks, and we have pingback attacks because we use WordPress platform, and that's a vulnerability of WordPress. And uh, uh, at uh, the top uh, hate of it, we have a uh, dozen gigabyte per, per second attacks. So it costs a uh, lot of money. And, and Nadia, I, very briefly, mm -hmm. is there any success story which you can share with, with us and with our viewers? Of attacks on our website? <laughs> no, the success stories of, your, of the work of your website, uh, which, whereby you have to un uncover some sort of a plot or um, you have to bring the perpetrators of some crimes to justice. Mm -hmm. Well, so far uh, I never heard of a criminal investigation which resulted into, uh, uh, into a sentence. Uh, obviously because uh, we are talking about uh, Russian citizens primarily and uh, Russia denies their presence and uh, officially, officially, but unofficially, uh, Russia totally supports. Uh, yeah, but you, you're working with, with military intelligence. Perhaps your military data, which you uncovered and which you published, mm -hmm. helped the Ukrainian military yes. to, to, to perform an effective strike or to, to seize a, a target. Well, I would prefer not to discuss, you know, the strikes <laughs> and uh, things like that. Yes, we're cooperating with, uh, with uh, the army and with uh, the law enforcement, uh, Ukrainian law enforcement agencies. And uh, yes, we supply the information, but, you know, now probably it's not the best time to, to discuss uh, this side of our uh, work. Uh, speaking of the uh, kind of educational uh, work we do, our uh, Russian presence infographics was used by Ukrainian delegation in the uh, United Nations uh, 
several weeks ago. Uh, we, we had a lot of inquiries from all over the world about our Syria investigation because basically what we did, we analyzed the uh, traffic of uh, uh, Russian vessels crossing uh, Bosphorus and uh, uh, figured out that something, uh, something is going on. Yeah, and so while it looks like some very important work you're doing there at Inform Nepal Hanaji, many thanks for finding the time to come and talk to us. This has been Volodymyr Masalov for Viewpoint, together with a volunteer of the Open Source Intelligence Gathering Resource, Inform Nepal Hanaji Kornyev. Thank you for watching us.